let's talk criminal justice reform because this president, uh, Trump, is taking credit for the First Step Act, uh, granting clemency to a lot of people like Alice Johnson, you know, making sure that that is very, and it's, it's resonating, you know. Um, a lot of the things that, you know, he's taking credit for unemployment in the black community. When, you know, if you, if you, if you look at the numbers, you know, post, you know, before COVID, of course, you know, unemployment was at a, at a, at a low, but that low was driven by things that were done in your administration. But again, the, the story's not being told. And I look at the fight and it's like, did you not know that you needed to take the gloves off? And both you and President Obama, pretty chill guys. You know, you have this, this, I don't know if it's code switching, but I think it is because you can, if you can break out into your Bayesian accent at any point in time, I know that, you know, <laughs> black men have to comport themselves a certain way or they're scary, you know? Was that in the back of your mind? You know, like we are the first black people to be in these positions and we have to make sure that we set the table properly. So we can't do some of the things that we might like to. Well, there's no question. You know, when I was, was in hearings with Republicans and they're, you know, going at me, you know, I was born and raised in New York City. I was born in the Bronx, you know, um, raised in Harlem and in Queens. And so they come at me there's a part of me that wants to go straight back at him. Uh, but I also knew that that would be, you know, in some ways counterproductive, that the, the, the story would then be, you know, the, the black attorney generals getting into it with, you know, some Republican congressman, as opposed to focusing on the policies, you know, that we wanted to push, um, you know, the changes that we wanted to make. And so, you, you know, you had to kind of take it. And that was hard. I mean, I, there's no drama, Obama, that's not me. Um, you know, I, I don't, you know, you hit me, I want to hit you back and I want to hit you harder. And so I had to kind of, you know, tone that, that down. Um, and I think you know, it probably served us well as an administration, but it was difficult for me as an individual to, to uh, you know, to conduct myself in that way. I think you know, it was appropriate. You know, you want to have, uh, if you're the Attorney General of the United States, you want to be seen as somebody who was worthy of the position. But uh, that was a personally <laughs> difficult thing for me. What does that even mean now, Eric Holder? What does that even mean? Well, yeah, you know, like, yeah, yeah. We have an attorney general that says now there's no systemic racism. So how do we fight racism if there's no systemic racism? You right. know, if the, the top lawyer of the country does not see it. So how, if I have a case, how do I bring that forward to someone who right. does not even see the thing that I'm experiencing every day? They yeah. have no decorum, right? As we mentioned, yeah. But you guys wanted to, you know, so all I, I said this week, I feel like in many ways, Trump's presidency is is this way to prove that that black man that was in the office, this office is trash. That wasn't special. So he's literally dismantling everything that is important about the presidency and, and reducing it to rubble. So it has no weight, has no, no cachet, and it undermines that this president did something special because this office is nothing. Yeah. I feel like he undermined the very fabric of the presidency. Yeah, no, and you know, I think you raised some important points there. And, you know, and for, for those black folks who are thinking about um, supporting Donald Trump, you gotta remember that they, he, as well as his attorney general have never said that there is such a thing as systemic racism, when in fact, there is empirical evidence that's painfully clear to show that it does exist, that it, is something that holds, um, you know, African Americans back. Um, if you want somebody who, you know, he he famously said, you know, what have you got to lose? Well, I'll tell you what you got to lose. You you have the the ability to lose your life because he's not been effective in fighting, you know, the virus that again has had a disproportionate impact on communities of color, African Americans, um, Hispanics. Yeah, he had low unemployment for the black community, the Hispanic community. That was just a function of the work that uh, was done in the Obama administration. He just got on the car that was already running down the road. And then when it came down to make some tough decisions, he ran that car off the road and into a ditch because he didn't respond to, he didn't respond to the virus. And, and so, you know, for those folks who I, I see th you know, thinking about, you know, supporting Trump or concerned about what a Biden administration is going to mean in terms of taxes, there's a lot more that's important um, than your individual financial situation. 
Um, if you are a person who has been made famous as a result of support by the black community, maybe you need to be caring about the black community as opposed to, you know, how your financial situation is going to be, um, be going to be impacted. Uh, care about COVID, care about criminal justice reform, uh, care about the economic situation that other black folks are having to deal with.